Off the eastern coast of the Philippines, the ocean floor drops into one of the deepest points in the Pacific, the East Luzon Trench. At over 18,000 feet deep, this subduction zone runs for nearly 400 miles along Luzon's coast. It's capable of generating a magnitude 8.0 earthquake and tsunami that would hit Manila, a city of 14 million people, from the opposite side most Filipinos expect. Everyone fears the Manila Trench to the west, but the East Luzon Trench might strike first. This is the forgotten threat on the other side of the Philippines. The East Luzon Trench sits where the Philippine Sea Plate is being forced beneath the Eurasian Plate. It runs roughly parallel to the eastern coast of Luzon, from the Bicol region in the south up toward northern Luzon. This is a highly active subduction zone. The plates converge at about 7 to 9 centimetres per year, faster than many other subduction zones around the world. When subduction zones like this release their stored energy, they don't just shake the ground. The seafloor moves vertically, suddenly dropping or rising by several meters. That vertical displacement pushes massive amounts of water upward, creating a tsunami. Most Filipinos living in Metro Manila think about tsunami threats from the west. The Manila Trench in the South China Sea. That makes sense. Manila faces west. The bay opens to the west. But the East Luzon Trench poses a different kind of danger. A major rupture here would send tsunami waves across the Philippine Sea, hitting the eastern coast of Luzon directly. Then those waves would travel overland or around the island, potentially reaching Manila Bay from the opposite direction. And the eastern coast of Luzon? Far less developed than Manila, but still home to millions. Cities like Legazpi, Naga, and coastal communities along Isabela and Cagayan provinces would be hit first. The East Luzon Trench doesn't make headlines like the Manila Trench or the Philippine Trench further south. But it has a history of major earthquakes. In 1968, a magnitude 7.3 earthquake struck near the East Luzon Trench. The shaking caused widespread damage across central Luzon and dozens of people were killed. A small tsunami was generated, though it didn't cause major coastal damage. In 1970, another earthquake, magnitude 7.3, struck further north along the trench. Again, casualties and damage occurred, though the tsunami impact was limited. These weren't megaquakes. They were powerful, but not catastrophic, on the scale of a magnitude 8.0 or higher. The East Luzon Trench is capable of much larger events. Geological studies suggest the trench has produced magnitude 8.0 plus earthquakes in the past, though these events occurred before modern record keeping. Evidence comes from tsunami deposits found along the eastern coast of Luzon, layers of sediment that were carried inland by massive waves hundreds of years ago. Scientists estimate the East Luzon Trench could rupture in a similar way to the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan. That event was a magnitude 9.0, and it devastated Japan's northeastern coast with a tsunami that reached heights of over 130 feet in some areas. The Philippines doesn't have Japan's level of infrastructure, early warning systems, or disaster preparedness. If a magnitude 8.0 or higher earthquake struck the East Luzon Trench, the consequences would be severe. Computer simulations have modeled what would happen if the East Luzon Trench produced a major earthquake and tsunami today. 
a magnitude 8.0 rupture would generate tsunami waves that hit the eastern coast of Luzon within 10 to 20 minutes. Coastal towns in Bicol, Aurora, Isabella and Cagayan would face waves potentially 15 to 50 feet high, depending on the exact location of the rupture and coastal geography. For communities that close to the trench, there's almost no time to evacuate. 10 to 20 minutes from the earthquake to the first wave. If people don't recognize the warning signs, strong shaking near the coast, the ocean receding suddenly, they won't make it to higher ground in time. But the threat doesn't stop at the eastern coast. The tsunami would propagate across the Philippine Sea in multiple directions. It would hit the northern coast of Luzon. It would travel south toward the Visayas. And depending on the rupture's orientation, it could send waves westward around the island, potentially affecting Manila Bay hours later. Five volks, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, has warned that the East Luzon Trench is one of the country's highest risk earthquake zones. But public awareness is low. Most disaster preparedness in the Philippines focuses on typhoons, not earthquakes and tsunamis. The 1976 Moro Gulf tsunami killed 8,000 people in Mindanao. That event is remembered in the south, but many Filipinos in Luzon don't think tsunamis are a major threat. The East Luzon Trench could change that. There's another factor that makes the East Luzon Trench particularly dangerous, the Philippines' vulnerability. Unlike Japan, which has sea walls, tsunami evacuation towers and regular drills, the Philippines has limited infrastructure for tsunami preparedness. Coastal communities are densely populated. Many people live in informal settlements right at sea level. Evacuation routes are inadequate or non-existent. Pivox has installed some tsunami warning buoys and seismometers along the coast, but coverage isn't complete. Even with perfect detection, getting warnings to remote coastal communities in under 20 minutes is a massive challenge. And then there's the issue of awareness. Many Filipinos don't know what to do if they feel a strong earthquake near the coast. The instinct is often to stay and check on family or property, but the correct response is immediate evacuation to higher ground. In Japan, after the 2011 earthquake, thousands of lives were saved because people knew the protocol. Strong shaking near the coast means tsunami is coming. Run to high ground immediately. Don't wait for official warnings. The Philippines needs that same level of public education, but right now it doesn't exist on a wide scale. The East Luzon Trench is active. It has produced deadly earthquakes in the past. Geological evidence shows it's capable of much larger events. And the eastern coast of Luzon, home to millions, is directly in the impact zone. This isn't a distant theoretical threat. It's a documented geological hazard that scientists have been warning about for years. But because it's overshadowed by other disasters, typhoons, the Manila Trench, volcanic eruptions, the East Luzon Trench doesn't get the attention it deserves. That's what makes it so dangerous. A 400-mile subduction zone capable of magnitude 8.0 earthquakes. Millions living along the eastern coast with minimal tsunami preparedness and a public that largely doesn't know the threat exists. The East Luzon Trench is one of the Philippines' deadliest geological features and most Filipinos have never heard of it. What should coastal communities do to prepare for an East Luzon Trench earthquake? Let me know in the comments. And if you want more videos about deep sea threats and disasters in the Philippines, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because sometimes the greatest danger is the one nobody's talking about.